Hey there fellow naturalists, this is Professor Iwigi with Crow's Path and I'm out here at Naket Bay. I'm hanging out with uh, some chickadees, you can hear chickadees in the background. And today we are going to be making thaumatropes. This is the second installment in our... And Cedar's here with me too. This is our second installment of Things That Spin. So we're going to be harvesting some birch bark and uh, a wood disc, a little tree cookie, to make our little optical illusion toy. So let's go and gather our materials. Tree cookie. And I'll meet you back inside. Tree cookie. Boots and I uh, just encountered the first species that we're looking for. So this is paper birch. Paper birch is a primary succession species, so after some uh, form of disturbance, it's the one of the first trees that'll move in. It grows really fast and it also dies young, so these things never get more than about 130 years old. And this one here is down on the ground. There are a bunch of other paper birches out here that are also on the ground, so it's a pretty strong indication that this forest is in tr uh, transition from uh, being primary succession into a later stage of succession. Um, and ultimately this is going to be a uh, mature, rich northern hardwood forest. There are lots of bitternut hickories and shagbarts and sugar maples, basswood, uh, and other stuff that indicate rich soils. So what we're looking for is, um, I just found this little sheet of um, paper birch uh, bark on the ground. And uh, we want something that's really thin. We're going to draw a small little design on this on uh, two separate circles. So this would be perfect for our drawings for the thaumatrope. Perfect. Now we just need a disc. All right, so it's not that I don't love paper birches, but one of my favorite parts about being out here at Niquette Bay are these calcium rich bedrock outcroppings, these little cliff edges uh, that are all over the place here. And these calcium rich bedrock sites are awesome habitat for spring ephemerals. So really sweet soils and a hardwood canopy. So you can see mostly hardwoods above me, some white pines in the back. And one of the things that happens in these hardwood forests with calcium rich bedrock is that you get in the springtime this amazing flush of all of these wildflowers called spring ephemerals. And spring ephemerals are plants that will live out their life uh, starting in the springtime as the snow melts and they'll go through their full cycle of developing leaves and then uh, developing flowers and going to seed all before the hardwoods in the canopy leaf out. So they're taking advantage of this cool little uh, time of year. All right, so we're down here at the bay and uh, yeah, I didn't want to harvest any of the uh, wood up in the forest and so we came down here and found this little shelter and it's made with a lot of driftwood. Um, so this actually is this pine. Um, so I'm going to grab this little piece of pine here and we'll cut our little disc out of it and then we're going to glue the birch bark onto this disc to make our thaumatro. All right, so we brought our materials back from the woods and uh, yeah, I cut a couple of uh, tree cookies from pine and then another one also from pine, but a smaller branch here. And uh, yeah, we wanted something that was super round and uh, thick enough to be able to drill holes into from the sides. The drill hole should be about two thick size and then we'll put little sticks in here so that at the end, uh, we can have these little handles on it that we can use to spin our little discs. We also have our birch bark and what we're going to do is we'll uh, trace these. And then we'll cut them out. All right, and we actually only needed to cut out one disc because uh, birch bark peels into these great layers. And so we can just split out one of these layers, do this carefully so it doesn't break. And now we have two of the exact same shape. All right, so I went ahead and laid out all of my different pieces. And uh, yeah, so we've got the thaumatrope here and then we've got our designs over here. And um, we're gonna have to glue them upside down so that as we spin it, you can see the A on this side is upside down from, or the inverse of the A on the other side. So we have to make sure that we do that so that as we spin, I'll show you on this side, so as we spin, both A's actually appear right side up. All right, so it's a pretty simple creation, but it's pretty amazing. These are, uh, you know, over almost 200 years old um, from when they were first invented. 
and uh, they were one of the first optical images, the first optical illusions that relied on uh, your retina holding an image, so a persistent image. So you're flipping this over and there's a slight delay in when your brain forgets it. So as you switch it over to the empty nest, your brain remembers that image and then it puts the bird in the nest. And so, yeah, if you spin it fast enough, you're tricking your brain into thinking that it's just one image. Pretty amazing. I'm getting the 